Hi, I'm Cameron McCluskey. I also go by Lookout Giants for internet purposes. I used to be called Taka. Um, I'm lucky enough to have worked on two albums by She's Got Claws now. But I guess that's something they like about my tunes. So um, thank you for letting me do this. I, I really appreciate it. And I'm actually really excited to talk about the remix again. Um, I've been doing this for like 12, 13 years. I went to beer music and studied under the wonderful Marco that works. I always worked with Winehouse and Aretha Franklin and Portishead. I, I feel like I've come from a truly blessed musical background with my uncle being who he is and my cousin also playing and um and I'm I'm just so grateful that she's got claws as part of that group of people, you know. But for real, like it was it, it felt like a like a Goliath task at first because where she's got claws perfectly encapsulate that late seventies, it's like mid eighties kind of glamorous gothic pop music that came out new romanticism to a t you know i then felt like i had to with my version of the song introduce you know 20 years of development for people like gary newman like gary newman went through and technology went through so much in the time since cars to prayer for the unborn and i was both humbled and greatly intimidated by the task of trying to translate a version of this song that would encapsulate I suppose a more modern aesthetic as far as gothic music goes so when I first heard Rewind to Fade I was in work I had my bosses in one ear and like 13 things on the go. But in one ear I had the track and I had to contain my excitement because I was in a professional environment. Um, like I really enjoyed working on music under Taka and I really enjoyed that first record. You know, it got, it, it got played in the car. It definitely got listened to. My friends got showed it. It was a pleasure to work on, but I was excited when I heard this. It, it, it kind of brewed that ambition because uh, it's groovier. The bass just rips at some points, you know, and the vocals are so catchy and the, the synthesizer elements just move the tune. The, the word is movement for this song. The word for the song is movement. It takes you somewhere and it has something to say, which so many songs these days just don't. So yeah, I. I'm grateful to be able to work on something like that. Having this project, I was locked in a stasis of listening to Prayer for the Unborn and trying to pick apart the elements that were picked and what was done and what, where these ideas came from. And I was playing a lot in Logic with like presets over the 16 bar kind of beat I guess just to compile noises that might be useful. I'm gonna kind of talk about a few key elements in the remix and I've got some records here for visual stimulus so that you can see the records I'm talking about that inspired me. So firstly um, for drum production and general arrangement uh, the, the two albums that I have to credit are Tyler the Creator's Igor which was amazing and a Grammy award winning album that was shoehorned into the urban category when it's like one of the most wonderful soul records ever made, Jesus Christ. Um, don't get me started. You got me started. And then the other record, which funny enough inspired the creation of Tyler the Creator's Ego is Dummy by Porter's Head, which has been a really important album to me for my whole life. Um, having spent a lot of time growing up in Bristol, uh, along with these two albums for drum production techniques, I don't have my copy of Safe From Harm with me now, but Massive Attack Safe From Harm was huge. You'll probably notice that the drum beat's like basically the same the whole way through. And um, that's just because of my love for hip hop loops and a good groove, you know, and I, I really believe that a good groove can be the whole song and, and I've implemented that here. Um, 
they influenced me in another way as well with the arrangement, but I, I'll talk more about the arrangement in a bit over a couple more records, but, you know, particularly in Tyler the Creator's Igor, there are so many songs that aren't like A, B, A, B, C, N. It's like just an experience. And instead of whole sections of a song coming around to remind you what they are, you get like bits coming back you you just get this odd synthesizer or this odd drum pattern or this odd bass line or like you know a couple of words that are repeated throughout the album that just catch you every time and i love that style of writing because it's so freeing the metric of pump out hook pump out verse get a song done in 350 minutes does it tick tock oh my god um so that's that that's you know drum production these two albums and massive attack save from harm because Jesus, just go listen to them. Um, as far as synthesizers go and like ambiences go, um, the two records that I would pick out of my bin that have really, really, really inspired me um, would be James Blake, The Color and Anything. And I really wanted to capture some of those elements, but with uh, with a little bit more of a maximalist approach, because that's me. The other record was Sleep Well Beast by The National, which I got a few years ago, and I don't listen to it so often, but it's there for me when I need it. You can see the inside of it as well. It's beautiful. And this is a little bit more in line with She's Got Claws. There's some, you know, post-punk elements in there, some new wave elements in there, but really it's just the complexity of all these twinkly, gorgeous little synths and, and the building up of, of a space in a song that I really appreciate this album for. It has... It has a physical place in the world when you listen to it. Uh, I don't think I could have written anything that I've done over the last four years without um, US Girls in a Poem Unlimited, which is also an absolutely stunning album with influences from everywhere. It's just so so groovy. It's just so, so groovy and, and it hits so hard at points. And it knows exactly when to pull away and... Um, Endless amounts of lessons have been learned from this. There's obviously, you know, you can probably hear that I've used quite a lot of dub delay in there. So obviously people like Lee Scratch Perry, which can't be into Mask Attack without being into Lee Scratch Perry. And uh, I, w I would say that's that's probably the extent of the influences that are worth talking about. Otherwise, you will be here for a long time. So I'm at Alex like four or five years ago at this grotty little metal venue in Liverpool. And from then on, we've just been innocent homies. And uh, a little bit after that time, we ended up living with each other for like nearly two years, which was a wonderful time. She taught me to sing better. We worked on tunes together. We jammed a lot. And you know, I really got to know her as a musician, you know, as well as a performer, because I, I went to loads of her shows. Why wouldn't you? And um, to cut to the chase, you know, I, I picked Alex, not just because I'm hugely biased and she's one of my best friends, uh, but because she's just, an unbelievable musician. What more can I ask for? She comes into the room and she asks me what I want and I'll tell her and then she'll go, have you considered X, Y, or Z? And I'll go, do it. And it's always perfect. Under this remix, she sat under the lead vocal and is just blending in because she's able to imitate other people's styles and techniques flawlessly. And that only comes with more than 20 years of experience in the game. Comparing the last remix to this one, it's like comparing a hacksaw to a scalpel. You know, they both have their place and they both do their jobs, but that last remix was an example and an expression of, of you know, the aggression I felt and the frustration I felt during lockdown. And, and just like lockdown, the tune went on for a bit too long and I didn't really get anywhere with it as, as many of those emotions go to nowhere also, whereas this new tune, uh, I feel like, is much more of a reflection of, of my sense of self now, and my life now, where there's momentum and continuous change, and there's a beautiful balance about the whole thing. But as a professional, I feel like it actually does a good job of communicating my musical vocabulary and the academic work that I've put into this. And um, I think it shows the level of care and intricacy that I really can sort of breathe into a work and I'm 
grief of the experience and proud of my work and that's what I have to say. But you know, thank you to the people at She's Got Claws for allowing me to do this remix. Um, but I'm really glad that I did. I'm really glad that I did and I've got a fan uncle for putting me into contact with these people. Um, you know, I should also obviously thank Alex. Everyone should thank Alex, not just for existing, but for being a wonderful musician because you will be hearing more of her throughout the years, definitely. And you'll be hearing some of her on my stuff as well if you guys wanted to maybe go and check out Look Out Giants um, on, on Spotify or Instagram. Uh, before I forget, I should probably thank my partner for sitting down and filming me talk shit for about four hours because even though this video is this big, I've been talking for this long because uh, I'm not very good at this. It's, it's, 